Hey, what's going on everybody? This episode, what do I want to talk about? Well, I actually just want to talk a little bit about the concept of things being static or dynamic. Now, this might not be 100% focused on Android development, uh, but I think that's fine because I don't just want you to come out of this knowing how to create some apps, but know nothing else about computers or programming. I want to teach you that in a way that's going to help you in, in your entire career. So this is going to be a really helpful video if you don't know this information already. And if you do, sorry, but you can, um, you can watch it or you can move on to the next episode. So you'll often hear the words static and you'll hear the words dynamic. Now, the meanings of these, what you think of them might depend on your age or when you got into computer programming or software development or whatever you want to call it. So let's go back far long, long time ago, at least for me, when web pages started being created. There was what were known as static web pages and dynamic web pages. So a static web page, you go on there, it has some info about your website, it might have a form for you to fill out for an email, and then you know what happened next? Dynamic web pages. Boom! The whole world exploded and everything changed because now instead of just having this information we could generate parts of the website so for example we could have the header that could be coded from one location we could have the footer that could be coded from another location and then we could generate the body and this body would come from a database so Things changed, things were dynamic. And one of the real benefits of this is that you could create the content to be specific for a particular user. So rather than saying welcome, you could say welcome Caleb or hello handsome or whatever you wanted to say. Well, I guess handsome wouldn't be dynamic. Yeah, Caleb would be dynamic because it would change depending on what your name is. So that was the introduction of dynamic websites. And this really started with PHP and now every programming language you can create websites with. So yeah, that's the first dynamic. Now the second dynamic has to do more with the way things look. So this also deals with websites, but it also deals with apps. So when you're talking about a dynamic look of a website, you're talking about the, that the things resize or fit depending no matter what the, the device you're viewing it with. So if you're viewing it on a desktop, it looks good. If you're viewing it on a mobile phone, it looks good. That's because the content is dynamic, or uh, a better word would be responsive to whatever device you're viewing it on. So that's another way you might hear dynamic, and the same thing for mobile phones and apps. So if you open an app on a big fat phone, it's gonna fill up the screen and look good. If you view it on a tiny thing, it should look good. View it on a tablet, it still looks good. So that is another way dynamic is used. Now the third way, and this is the most important, sorry I keep going back and forth, I'm, I'm antsy here. I'll try to chill out, okay. So the third way, is, you ready for this? The way you access information and work with information. So, XML, this the stuff you define when you're creating your application, this is all static. And we talked about in the previous episode how to statically define an ID for a view for any component on the screen. We do that inside the, the, the visual editor or using the XML. And it's static because it's pretty much hard-coded, meaning we can see the value in the code. And although this works for the, the start, we don't want to do this all the time. We want to avoid it whenever possible because it can be limiting. Instead, we want to do things dynamically. Now, don't take me the wrong way, all you people with 50 years of experience. I am not saying doing things statically is bad or setting up the structure in XML is bad. You should do that, but anytime you want things to change or adapt, or update mid-app so you don't have to make a new version of your application and change it, that's when things become dynamic. 
So you can change parts of, of the view dynamically inside of code. And we want to make this very uh, general, or I, I hesitate to use the term generic, but basically we want to make it so that we, we can make our code work in as many scenarios as possible with as little code as possible. So here's an example of a way we can make our code dynamic. You can say r.id. I think that's uppercase. It's going to take a little peek over here. No, jeez. r.id. And then we could say an ID of an element such as hello. We'll be using this as well as find view by ID to basically grab an element and update that. So later on, we can have people type in what they want a text box to say, and it will update. That's how you can do things like, for example, a shopping app or a uh, shopping cart list or a to-do list. People can type in the things they got to do, press the button, and it goes adds to the list. It's all done dynamically in the code. So none of those values are hard coded. You know, you're not going to put every single possibility of things people could shop for in the application. You're just going to grab whatever value comes from a text box. We're going to take that, store it in what's known as a variable. You could probably even skip this step, but take that variable value and display it on the activity. So mind the terrible drawing, but you guys get the point. So that's just a little bit on the history of things being static versus dynamic. So thank you guys for watching. Please be sure to stay tuned and um, check out the next video because we are going to be probably making some buttons just getting some more experience with the different different things we can do. So go check that out and I'll see you then. Peace out.